Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Sunday morning here in Australia, so obviously sort of Saturday night stateside time, and the market has slipped a little bit again, so $1.57 trillion. So again, still holding above the $1.5 trillion, so uh, it's not awful, but again, you know, altcoins are really kind of uh, bearing the biggest brunt because Bitcoin's really just ranging, whereas... You know the altcoins i mean they just sort of continue to go down and down and down but anyway that's what it is uh you know everyone you know who's been watching my channel for a while should know that i'm not panicking at the moment you know i'm trying not to buy too many altcoins i did buy some the other day so i bought some uni i bought some what else did i buy i bought some synthetics and i bought some Aave. but they've gotten uh, you know a little bit lower not too much but really I'm just trying to focus on Bitcoin uh, and Ethereum at the moment but you know again every now and then I see some coins and particularly DeFi I'm still really bullish on DeFi I'll see them at a good a really good price and I think all right I'll buy some more and if they go lower look I just accept that all right but let's move on so again holding that 1.5 trillion dollar mark Bitcoin dominance continues to rise, ETH dominance continues to fall, and gas prices, well, we're back in the double digits, but there's not really much difference between, uh, you know, 9 guay and 10 guay. All right, so a bit of a mixed bag there, a little bit of green, you know, sporadically here and there, but again, generally, the market is just down overall, hence why, you know, down 1.5%. All right, in the last 24 hours, has anything done well? This will be interesting. All right, Polygon uh, up a little bit in 24 hours, but look, still down overall over seven days. So, yeah, not doing so great. All right, uh, Waves, uh, a small little bounce there. Uh, Internet Computer, a small little bounce there. But, I mean, again, look, still down, what is that, 41.2% for seven days. So, I mean, that really, really hurts. And, again, look, most things uh, are down. That's just the way it is. But small little gains. Now, again, you know, is the weekend correction over or is tomorrow, which will be Monday Australian time, but Sunday uh, stateside time, is that when we're going to see the worst of it? And then, you know, come Monday morning, do we get a bit of a bounce back? I guess that's what everyone's really sort of waiting to see. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure. I think there might be a small bounce back because generally there's the weekend sell off and prices will pump up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to be in the altcoins at the moment. I really do think, you know, Bitcoin's just going to continue to range. So, yeah, unfortunately for altcoin holders, uh, times aren't looking very good at all. They're really getting hammered. Again, I mean, 24 hours, this is a small little bounce, but come tomorrow, there's every chance that they'll lose these gains and some again. All right, let's move on. We've had a look at the market. What are the charts kind of telling us? Uh you know, we had this kind of bullish divergence and it's still sort of playing out, but now things have leveled off because we had this uh, bearish divergence basically kind of going down along here and this is where it all sort of met. So that was the bearish divergence and we had this bullish divergence sort of happening. So we'll change this bottom one to green. So that we can see it was bearish and that was this playing out. And then we had uh, this bullish divergence. So these lows continued to get higher and they still have, but now we're coming to a, you know, a point here where we're gonna see what's gonna take over the bulls or the bears. And look, in all fairness, neither have to take over. We can just travel sideways, but also we can see that we had this uh, bullish divergence here and we thought it was gonna go bearish again and it didn't. And it is still continuing to rise, which is really, really good. It's on an upward trend. And look, if we really scale out, this will probably take a while uh, to load up. Come on. Any minute now. Here we go. We can see on the MACD, we haven't been down this low in basically forever. But in saying that, we've never been sort of so high either. So, you know, that's why we've had such a harsh correction is the market really was quite overcooked because, I mean, this was the peak back in 2017-18. And there you can see that we only, you know, got to around about there, 250. And here, I mean, at the peak, we're at 5,118. Oh, sorry, that was 2,500. Uh, yeah, 2,000 sort of 500. So but we basically doubled it. But then also the low was only, what's that, 1,300. Sort of and then we got down to 5,000 here. 
So we were quite overextended. And look, that's really just what I'm looking uh, for at the moment is, you know, is the market going to make a decision or is it just simply going to go sideways? And again, I've said this a few times. I think we go sideways. Uh, you know, I will most likely be proven wrong at some stage. But yeah, really at the moment. So we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of that. I really just do see more sideways action. So you can see we still kind of flirt around with this upwards trend. You know, we dip out of it and then we jump back in. So again, I think, you know, today... It's only just started. We're only eight minutes into the day, so we'll have to wait and see. And I wouldn't be surprised if we get some more downside uh, and particularly come tomorrow, so the Sunday over in the States, and then Monday morning uh, it jumps back up here. And I think we just keep sort of flirting around this uh, space for a while. And look, we might even get well under this. This might become invalidated, and that doesn't mean it's a bear market. If we just range sideways for a while, that's going to be just fine. And again... I say this every video and I just want to, you know, <laughs> make sure that people understand my position and then, you know, hopefully that can help you make a decision. But I'm not offering financial advice. I'm definitely not a financial advisor. Right, let's go have a look at some news stories, some interesting ones. So Top Trader at Three Arrows Capital analyzes the state of Bitcoin and altcoins markets. So the co-founder and chairman of crypto focus hedge fund Three Arrows Capital, Kyle Davies, believes there will not be a repeat of the 2017 bull market in the current market cycle. Davies says that Bitcoin and altcoins are in a super cycle, while warning that the crypto markets will see significant corrections. So that doesn't mean we go into a four-year uh, bear market. It just means that we correct. And now that we've recovered, uh, we just keep going, right? There's no more false selling beyond this, basically, uh, is his thinking. And I would have to agree, I do get the feeling like we've found a bottom uh, but, you know, people are still very, very nervous and it takes a while for people to sort of grow their confidence again before they want to come back. They want to make sure that it's not dipping any further. So really, it could take days, weeks, even months of sideways action before people are confident and they go, hey, you know what, this has, has bottomed out. This is a good time to get back into the market, believing that it's then going to go to an upside. And look, I will show you something. Look, if we go to the fear and greed index at the moment, it has risen slightly. It's still, you know, not great. 23, this was 28 before, so it's come down a little bit. We're still really in that kind of extreme uh, fear part. So that's what makes me think, you know, it'd be hard to see us going lower, but not impossible. All right, interesting here. Binance to launch new uh, on-chain NFT platform. And I've got some even more interesting news about uh, NFTs coming up very, very shortly. So Binance announced it is launching Premier NFT platform featured, which will go live on the Binance smart chain. So again, I think the NFT space is going to be massive. I think cryptocurrencies is going to be massive, but it is facing some hurdles. And I'll get to the story very soon, which uh, again shows that there's, you know, we get all this good news and then we're going to get some bad news to follow it up. And that's how it is generally in life. You know, you want to search anything you want on the internet, you're going to find almost equally as many stories telling you how bad something is as how good something is. And it's up to you to make your own decision uh, about what you think about any specific topic. All right. Texas banks, I mean, this has been coming for a while, but now it's finally passed. They can provide Bitcoin custody. So Texas banks have received green light to store Bitcoin and offer crypto assets for customers. With the recent increase in Bitcoin adoption, the Texas Department of Banking has confirmed that Texas state chartered banks will now be allowed to store Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies for their clients. Again, it's trickle, trickle. These are the first lot of banks that are going to be able to do it. Crypto exchanges have been given banking licenses. And this is always how it starts. There's going to be some kind of little outlier that's going to, you know, take that first initial step. And if it's successful, and I'd say it most likely will be, slowly but surely, a couple others will do it and a couple of others will do it. And then eventually everyone sees that this is working. It's been going on for a while. Radio, we're getting in. You know, that old saying, and everyone's saying it at the moment, no one wants to be the first, but then no one wants to be the last. 
So El Salvador, they're the first, and I hope they stand strong and, you know, don't get persuaded by the IMF to change the rules and all the rest of it, because what will happen, and I can tell you right now, this is, you know, personal opinion, again, it's never financial advice, but I am of the firm belief that the IMF, you know, and all these big places, they're going to do as much as they can to slow this Bitcoin adoption down, so they can, and not just Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies general, in general, and they're going to get all over it. And then when you least kind of expect it, they're going to say, you know, Bitcoin is the way of the future and cryptocurrencies and we believe in all this and blah, blah, blah. Because they know this fiat system that we have, it is literally dying in front of them. This, I think, uh, the US dollar is almost the longest lasting uh, fiat system uh, in all of history. It's not too far off. And again, we can all see inflation sort of starting to happen around us. So I hope that, you know, El Salvador holds tight. A couple of other, you know, most likely South American, uh, you know, nations will follow. Mexico, Paraguay, things like that. And uh, there was even a tweet of Tonga. Uh, so in the South Pacific, looking to do it. And again, it'll be those little countries and they will do the best because they will get in nice and early. They will have Bitcoin as a part of their store of wealth and things like that. And then when the rest of the world follows, which again, it will, the system we have is so broken uh, that, you know, we ha there's nothing else. There is literally nothing else that can redefine finance like cryptocurrencies they are fixed that is it there's no more you can't get any more uh you know again gold still works and it's got its place a lot of people kind of bash gold in the cryptocurrency space it still has a place in finance but the thing is we keep finding more gold we don't know how much more gold there is left in the world so it's not capped at the moment and again there's all this talk about you know they're being you know tons and tons of gold on you know asteroids and maybe on the moon and mars and all the rest of it so gold well again is still a valuable store of wealth it doesn't really go down by too much there's constantly more coming in so it's not uh it's not capped it's not hard fixed like bitcoin so yeah i've got on a, a little bit off on topic there but again this is where it starts you know a couple of banks here a couple of banks there a couple of countries here a couple of countries there and then all of a sudden it's just a flood everyone starts to do it particularly if bitcoin you know let's just say it ranges for a little while and you know el salvador's you know mining all this bitcoin and using it and holding it and then you know in three months time suddenly it's back to you know 40 50 thousand they've nearly doubled their money, you know, buying it at sort of 30 something thousand, not quite, but particularly when Bitcoin gets to 60,000 and El Salvador's mined, you know, maybe a couple of hundred, you know, maybe even a couple of thousand Bitcoin uh, in that time, then again, all of a sudden their, their, their nation's wealth has, you know, sort of doubled i mean they're not going to put all their money into it but you know what i mean that part of it anyway will have doubled and when other countries see that happening and they see that it doesn't continue to just keep falling all the way down and going to zero or going back to you know five thousand or eight thousand dollars like a lot of people think it will that lends to the you know thought that maybe the super cycle that they're talking about over here is actually going to come true now again we've got to be very careful with that because you know there's whales out there that own a lot of it and they're going to, you know, try and manipulate the market. But if countries start to jump on board and everyone's trying to, you know, get on top of it, whales probably won't be trying to short the market so much. I mean, don't get me wrong, they will attempt to, but they'll probably clue on pretty quick. All right, this is really getting uh, bought up now and they'll simply just hold and then rather than, you know, really try and play the market too much, they'll just sell bits and pieces here and there. But again, you know, there's no guarantees. There's some whales out there that really do own an extreme amount of it and who knows what they might to do. But that's what makes me think uh, some of that could be going on. Again, you know, El Salvador's the first. Who's going to be the next? These Texas banks are kind of the first. Who's going to be the next? We'll have to wait and see. All right, another reason why I'm super bullish on cryptocurrencies, just in general, it's not just Bitcoin, it's cryptocurrencies and why they are going to be so big in the future. 47% of millennial millionaires have invested at least 25% of their wealth 
in the cryptocurrency market. That's half of all the new millionaires that are being made these days, the young ones anyway, not the older ones. The older ones are still, you know, doing whatever they believe, you know, property and stuff. And I'm, I'm not bashing property at all. I think property is a great investment. But half of the new millionaires that are coming through have, a, you know, a quarter of their wealth in cryptocurrencies. What does that tell you? You know, yes, we're living in the now, but we need to be able to plan for what is coming in the future. If you can't adapt to change, you'll get left behind. You become like Peter Schiff. He's a dinosaur. He's just stuck on gold and he can't move on from it. You know, Warren Buffett was the same, although there's, you know, talk that uh, he invested $500 million into uh, some uh, digital currency bank or something that's starting up over in brazil so at least he's probably now been clued on to you know this is coming this is happening i need to change my stance and views that is something that i'm really worried about uh for me moving forwards you know in my financial future i want to make sure that i don't end up like that that i don't get too old and just unable to change my views and miss out on the next thing that comes along and i'm not saying that there's you know always going to be something new coming like every two years or something like that i mean there are smaller opportunities i think cryptocurrency right now is the opportunity of my lifetime but i don't want to get towards the end of my not the end of my life i mean that sounds really horrible but you know let's say 30 40 years down the track from now and something else really good's coming not that's going to revolutionize well maybe again something that revolutionizes the world and I'm just too old and stuck in my ways to be able to see what's coming and take advantage of that. And again, when I read statistics like this and, you know, take it with a pinch of salt, you know what I mean? This is a cryptocurrency focused uh, website, so it's usually going to spruik the upside to it. But I just, I, I see so much stuff like this out there that I do believe this is the way of the future. All right, Dave Portnoy. So he was a real skeptic for a while and he bought Bitcoin and sold Bitcoin. Uh, and it seems that uh, he really is, you know, finally starting to understand it. So the CEO and founder of Barstool Sports, Dave Portnoy, admitted that at the beginning he thought Bitcoin was a Ponzi scheme. Eventually he changed his stance and he's even opposed Donald Trump, who called the uh, primary cryptocurrency a scam. So this is what he said. This is uh, Dave Portnoy. I thought when Bitcoin was first introduced and for a long time that it was a Ponzi scheme. I've come around on it. It's too widely accepted. There are too many people using it. Too many big people believe in it. Too many stores accepting it. There's liquidity. You can get in and out of it easily. The out part uh, is, you know, everyone makes their own mind up. For me, uh, I really don't sell Bitcoin too much at all. I will sell little bits of it here and there when I think it feels like it's a little bit overheated but i mean i'll never be you know there's definitely you know most of my bitcoin I, I, you know i can't imagine selling uh any time in the near future definitely a percentage of it maybe you know 10 percent, possibly 20 percent at most if we get to some crazy prices and again i think it's really overheated but you know basically 80 percent of it i'll never sell i'll just simply hold and again i continue to buy it if it's under an old all-time high i think that's a really good time to buy once it gets over an old all-time high then you know you got to make your uh, own decisions about whether you think it's uh, still good to you know continue to you know at least if you're just investing in bitcoin you know uh, then really i guess it doesn't matter but you know if you're trying to you know well, DCAing, I guess, yeah, I've got to be careful, you know, when I say that kind of stuff because DCAing pays off. Uh, that's what it's shown, that if you DCA into anything, no matter the price, you know, those are the people that usually make the most amount of money. But, yeah, for me, I just, once we get, you know, into that price discovery, it's not that I won't put any money into Bitcoin, but I just don't want to be, you know, throwing everything at Bitcoin when it's in price discovery, particularly knowing that it could come back down uh, and finish a whole lot lower. But, you know, again, you make your own mind up. I don't offer financial advice. All right, Taproot, it's locked in. So it is coming in November. So Taproot, uh, Taproot locked in, uh, achieved. Bitcoin network set to activate the biggest upgrade in four years. So again, it's coming in November. There's, you know, 
this has been coming for such a long time and they needed to get, you know, majority of the miners to get on board and finally it has happened. And so now uh, in November, it's starting to happen. Now also, you know, Litecoin's got Mimble Wimble uh, coming uh, in the not too distant future and privacy and things like that. And generally what happens on Litecoin then finds its way over to Bitcoin. So again, there's so much going on in this space that yes, short term, it can be really, really hard to get involved in these markets. But long term, I'm just super bullish. And on a number of cryptos, you know, there's I think like tens of thousands or maybe 10,000 plus different cryptos out there. I think there might be about 100 of them that are legit and really, really good. And again, they're mainly ones that are already in the top 100. But that's not to say anything outside of the top 100 is no good. We'll have to wait and see. But I think, you know, there's a number of DeFi projects that I think, you know, they're just so innovative and so new. They'll be around for a long time. NFTs, I think, are going to be really, really big. And again, then supply chain and then just finances. Again, things like, you know, Bitcoin, uh, Litecoin. I, th I don't think either of those two are going anywhere. Uh, Ethereum, you know, it can be used uh, as, you know, sort of money. I, I don't consider it money. I consider that more that Web3 kind of thing. So, you know, those first layers, I definitely think they've got some uh, potential as well. But there's a number of them. I mean, you know, Solana, Cosmos, Ethereum, Cardano, Polkadot, you know, and the, and the list goes on. I don't know if all of them can, you know, survive. I think definitely a few of them can survive and there'll be one general kind of big winner and then a couple of other smaller ones. But, you know, who knows which one. Now, here's uh, what I was talking about that's uh, somewhat concerning. No, this is a different one. So Stax is partnering with a South Korean e-commerce uh, protocol Paycoin, uh, it's the Thai SEC one that we'll get to that I'm a bit worried about, to support transactions with its currency STX. So this is good for Stacks. Now the integration means that merchants who accommodate Paycoin will soon accept STX and Bitcoin as methods of payment uh, from the Stacks Foundation, which builds at apps on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. So businesses that accept pay coins, such as Domino's Pizza, KFC, and 7-Eleven, will allow for customers to transact in these cryptocurrencies. Now there are over 1 million users of Paycoin application and 70,000 businesses that accept this cryptocurrency. So this is great news for Stacks. Uh, you know, it, it shows that there's adoption, there's people, you know, willing to, you know, onboard this type of stuff. So, you know, at least in South Korea, that means Stacks has, has you know, it's got a footprint there. People are going to use it, so it doesn't solidify it. And means it's and doesn't mean it's never going to go away. But this is where it all starts. And then you know, is there another country that'll take on Stacks? And that's why I think there's going to be you know room for a number of chains. Like I know uh, Cardano is doing a lot of stuff uh, in Africa. So again, you know, different countries, not everyone has to accept, you know, the same thing. There'll probably be one primary thing, i.e. Bitcoin, but then other little, you know, countries will have their own kind of things. You know, again, uh, you know, Algorand's building stuff, uh, you know, in certain countries and, you know, Stellar Lumens and all the rest of it again over in Europe and things like that. So, yeah, I think there will be space for a number of different chains and you know bits and pieces but there will be something that kind of reigns supreme and i think bitcoin will always be the fundamental basis of that but outside of you know that kind of monetary thing then you know ethereum's definitely looking pretty good all right china so confirm china orders yuan's bitcoin miners to cease operating by the end of june so that's not too far away We're already halfway through june right now so it seems china is going around to a number of places uh, in China and shutting down Bitcoin uh, mining operations. But it's just, it's hard to gauge on whether they're putting, uh, shutting them all down or just ones that are operating, you know, sort of semi illegally and aren't using green energy. Because we go further down here. Now it says by the end of June, all Bitcoin mining operations must be scrutinized, not shut down, not closed, and cleaned up. Any operation that uses electricity without permission must be stopped. So again, there's you know some sensationalization sort of going on about what's happening in China. China's really big on becoming green at the moment because you know they 
they've got such a big population, uh, you know, and the air quality and all the rest of it over there has been not so good because of fossil fuels and all the rest of it. And they're trying to move away from that. So really all they're doing is shutting down these big operations that number one, you know, probably haven't really, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Done the right thing by, you know, announcing themselves, you know, uh, you know, using green energy, you know, they're kind of, skirting i guess the laws over in china is what i uh, sort of suspect because again using electricity without permission so there's probably some that have been you know operating illegally would probably be the best best way you know they're not properly regulated and things like that so i don't think china's shutting down all uh, bitcoin mining but they are definitely going after the ones that you know haven't been abiding by the rules over in china so uh, and that's probably played a bit of uh a bit into the price correction of just the cryptocurrency market. But there is a lot of talk of these uh, Bitcoin mining operations moving over to uh, places like the States where they've got cheap energy, particularly Texas and things like that. So it will be interesting to see what they do because even Mongolia and other areas around there have also been cracking down as well. So this is the story that I found very interesting. So Thai SEC orders exchanges to delist mean coins NFTs and social tokens. So I can see this stuff sort of catching on around the world. But I, I, you know, I think we need to be somewhat sort of careful with it. So now it wasn't just those. So social tokens are basically tokens that you know celebrities bring out and things like that. You know, you know, you can get rewards and things by being part of you know, you know, their little kind of social network and all the rest of it. Uh, NFTs. Uh, you know, again, you know, NFTs that, uh, you know, a sports player or something might uh, come out and also meme coins, so things like Doge coins. But it further went on to say that the final class of tokens affected by the ban are exchange tokens, so OKX, Huobi token uh, and BNB. So it'll be interesting to see if this is something that catches on, you know, sort of around the world. And this is that regulation that we're talking about, you know, Doge coin, you know, Again, I, I don't mind the idea of if the public decide uh, it's good and real, then then it can be, you know, the public decide. But, you know, again, they just don't have a lot being built on at the moment. You know, it is it was kind of made of a joke. So, you know, you don't want to have stuff out there that, you know, particularly the public who aren't well informed decide, no, you know, this coin's great and it turns out it was a complete and utter scam and a whole lot of people lost their money and all the rest of it. So we really need to watch out for this and NFTs as well. So NFTs, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of those. So, you know, some NFTs are good and others aren't. So, yeah, yeah, we just need to be yeah, very, very mindful of, you know, how NFTs are used. Uh, and, and again, you know, like, you know, there's talk about NFTs, you know, you know, being staked and being able to make money from them. Well, there has to be something based around that NFT. It can't be just some random, you know, Pokemon NFT that, you know, any that doesn't have anything else behind it other than it's just a Pokemon NFT and people are somehow making money from that. You know, again, I don't I don't know too much about NFTs, so I just I don't want them to be completely delisted because I know that there's, you know, lots of really innovative and good ideas that are coming surrounding NFTs, but unfortunately there's a lot of crap ones out there. All right, bit of a long video today. So again, it's the weekend here. I'm gonna go outside and enjoy it. Uh, I hope you do the same. So stay safe. Be kind to one another. You know, if you're on that gain train at the moment, congratulations to you. You've outdone the market. All right, I'll see you next time.